Hello. Right, we're going to use this lovely blue um, quilting cotton to make our hoop today. I'm going to use a five inch hoop for this and it's about roughly 18 by 18 centimetres, maybe slightly bigger, maybe 20. Um, this is pure solids in aerial blue and it's a beautiful blue and I've picked some lovely spring colours to go with this um, to make this little project today. So I'm just going to tighten the hoop um, and I'm going to keep checking the tension of my fabric as I go along um, just because I want to make sure that it's nice and flat. So just tighten the screw there. Um, as I've shown you in previous projects these um, wooden hoops have got a little screw thread so if you do need to tighten it with a screwdriver then you can. Right I'm going to go a bit freestyle again today so I'm using an Aquatrick marker because I don't want it to disappear as fast as an air erasable pen but if you can stitch a bit quicker then you can use whatever you prefer. So to stitch the um, oven roses, um, it's actually called a woven spider web, spider web even technically, um, but lots of people use them to stitch beautiful roses. It's such a nice effect. It's a lovely, lovely 3D kind of effect that you get with these. Um, I'm going to stitch a little bouquet today um, using the five spoke wheels here. Um, on the tutorial, which if you hop back to the previous video, you'll see I'm using a seven spoked one. So if you want to see the difference, go and have a look at that. Um, I'm not just going to include roses here, I'm going to put some little daisies in, um, these little vintage style daisies that are really easy to stitch as well. We're going to use a straight stitch for those um, and I'll show you how to do those a little later on. Right, let's just do another one there. I'm basically just drawing it on. I'm just going to go for it this week. What I'll do is I'll put some little templates on the blog so if you want to trace them you can, um, but you're just going to use those to build up your own little bouquet. So I've got some of this lovely thread here. It's shade 335 um, and I'm using all six strands so just take your time threading your needle. It may take a little while. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch the spokes first with a straight stitch um, because um, that provides the basis on which you basically weave your thread around. So just pop some straight stitches in. I usually um, start this by um, coming up through the middle, going to the edge, and then with the remaining ones, coming up through the outside and going into the middle. But you can come up through the middle every time if you prefer. I don't think it really matters because ultimately it's going to get covered up by the time you've finished. So we'll just pop these in. Now, because I've done them freestyle, they're not exactly perfectly round. If you want to make sure that they're perfectly round, I'll make sure that that's on the template for you. <laughs> so you can just trace them. Um, and when it comes to tracing, um, you can always tape your template to a window once you've painted it out and just trace it over there. Or sometimes if it's on a, a light surface, then you can trace through anyway, so it's easy enough to follow. Right, okay, so. Now I've got all those done, I'm going to come up through the middle. Oh, and that's what happens sometimes. <laughs> Never mind, just quickly pop that one in. No one will know. Come up through the middle, but not where you've ended that last stitch, because otherwise it'll just come out like that. But it doesn't matter. Right, there we go. So keep checking the tension of your fabric. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to weave. So I start under first, and then over the next one. And then you're going to go under that one, over the next one, under that one over the next one and as you're um, weaving round and round what you'll actually um, need to do is just make sure that that thread is going towards the middle of your um, woven web there. So sometimes you might just need to kind of pull it a little bit to make sure it's going in the middle and basically as you weave round and round um, it will all come together. Right we're just going to speed things up. If only I could stitch them this fast. <laughs> um, just because doing this in real time is lovely and watching it is lovely but I think we can just skip through this bit a little bit quicker for you here. So keep going over under and you're basically trying to fill all of the area within those spokes. Um, so here we are, I've got much further now. 
you just need to, when you get to this stage, make sure that you're not catching the outer edges of the thread because otherwise you might pull it a little bit, although you can sort of poke it back in with a needle if you need to, but just be really, really careful that you're not um, catching the thread in the wrong place there. Now, one of my spokes is slightly bigger on here because I drew it a bit too long. Obviously, I didn't draw them as perfect circles because I just did it by eye. Um, and that's absolutely fine. Um, because we're stitching this in a bouquet, I'm actually going to cover that up with one of those daisies. You'll be able to see that later. Um, so keep stitching until you're happy with the kind of coverage that you've got there. Let's pull that again. Um, make sure that you're happy with the coverage. Um, and so if there's a little bit left, you might just want to go around again, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to tuck through there. Um, you can um, move it around. You can see what it looks like just by pulling a bit of the thread along further along to see if you need any like another rotation around the wheel. Um, but you'll get a feel for it and it's a bit hard to explain, but you'll, you'll know what I mean <laughs> when you're stitching it. You'll know when it feels like you've got to the edges there. Just going to put that back round. So just do whatever feels right for you. Also, I'm getting quite close to the end of my thread, so I don't really want to go loads further now. There we go. Yeah, I think that's looking good. Fab. Okay, so to finish off, you just need to push your needle back through the fabric. At a point where it's going to be hidden and then just really carefully tie off the back. As usual you don't want to pull it out um, too much because you don't want to pull the rows out of shape in any way so just be careful that you're not pulling too tightly. I'll trim off the excess there. There we go that's our first rows so I'm going to do these other ones and then I'll come back and here we go. So as you can see, I've also stitched in some of the daisies as well, um, just with straight stitches. So I've got some white thread. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do these. It's six strands again um, for these daisies, just to give them that lovely um, thickness there. And I love these daisies. They're so easy to stitch. Really, really nice, just with some simple straight stitches. So start at the middle and go to the outer edge. And then what I usually do is on the next petal, start on the outer edge and work in. And then you basically just alternate all the way around. So simple, so effective. I love them. I think they're fab. So we sort out this tangle. It's going well. <laughs> um, yeah, they're just so effective. I mean, you see them a lot on um, like vintage style tablecloths. And I love using them. They're really great if you're doing a freehand project um, that's got florals in um, because they're just so easy. <laughs> so easy and they look so lovely. Um, I've chosen to do them white here because I thought um, it would just be a really nice sort of fresh um, colour palette to use with this blue. I love cornflower blue. It's such a nice colour, isn't it? I also wanted to make the pink the roses kind of really pop as well so I think that the white works really nice with these colours. I put all of the details about the materials that I'm using um, on the blog post for this week's project so if you want to know um, the colours and things obviously this is just white blanc DMC um, but all the details will be on my blog and links to find the materials in my shop um, will be there as well so if you've got any questions about that you can drop a comment below on the video or you can comment on the blog post or contact me through social media that's fine I'm always happy to answer any questions so there we go it's as easy as that create a beautiful flower with just a few straight stitches and you know you, if you've been following this project you know that I normally use three strands that's standard for me but using the six strands for them just gives them that extra kind of oomph <laughs> there we go Right, so I'm going to use this lovely cornflower shade to just add a few extra little details on these daisies as well. Um, and it's really nice with this project to actually go back and use some of the other stitches because some of the projects I tend to just use um, that stitch that we've done for that week. But I think now we're starting to um, 
learned quite a few. I mean, it's March already. We're on week 11. Um, it's nice to be able to um, use a few of the others that we've already learned as well. Um, in case you're wondering, this is Thread Heaven. Um, it's a thread conditioner and unfortunately they don't make it anymore, um, which is why I recommend Thread Magic, which is basically the same thing. Um, but I can't find my Thread Magic. <laughs> I've put it down. I've put it down somewhere in a safe place, that old chestnut. I'm sure I'll find it after I've filmed this video. But anyway, so that's what I'm using. If you want to check out Thread Magic, again, it's in my shop. It's on some of the um, other videos that I've used, um, that I've recorded even. Um, and it's uh, just lovely. It helps with stitching and it helps keep your stitching really good condition once you've done. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just add a few little French knots into the centre of these daisies. So, needle in front, thread behind. That's the trick. One, two, three. Make sure you're finishing at the top. Hook it in close to where you've come through and then just pull that thread. Not too tightly because you want to be able to actually pull your needle through. But the knot should already be next to the fabric at the bottom of your needle. And then you just pull. Ta-da! If you want to watch that in more detail, just go and find the French knot tutorial. I've just put it in here just um, so you can see what I'm doing. But if you're needing a better system for French knots, um, go and do it. Because with this system, basically, I want to say they work every time. Now and again, they don't if I'm tired or I'm not concentrating. But generally speaking, it's a pretty good sort of foolproof way of doing them. I'm going to put one more in here um, and I've chosen this blue so that it didn't stand out too much. I really want the daisies and the, the petals of the um, petals of the daisies and the roses to be the main feature. So I've chosen a colour that kind of coordinates with the fabric there, but you can make it stand out better if you want. So now that's the others done. You can see I've added French knots on the other daisies and they've got a bit more in on the other two, but that's OK. So it's time to get our um, pens back out because now I'm going to draw in some stems. Uh, let's put that one up there. Don't know if it needs an extra flower on that right hand side. I can't decide. I'm going to stitch it and see. And that's the beauty of just kind of going a bit freestyle and doing your own thing. You can add bits to it as you please. So I thought that as we're doing stems, we do stem stitch. Hurrah. Makes sense, doesn't it? You could use back stitch if you want to. That would work really well. Or even like a really teeny tiny chain stitch would be really, really nice. So I'm using three strands for this. Um, and I think this is 959. Yep, 959. Um, I wanted a kind of really bright sort of fresh green. I know this isn't standard stem colour really, but it doesn't matter because it's my hoop and it's my design and I think it goes really, really nice with this pink and the blues. Um, but you could use a more traditional green if you prefer. And I'm just going to put some chain stitch in here. This loopy um, system that I came up with having practised stem stitch a little bit a few weeks ago when I, when I learnt it, um, definitely is the way for me. Um, it's just really, really helpful to be able to see where you're going with the stitches. Um, I like it. So again, have a look at the tutorial if you want to do that, because there's a different way that you can do it that um, learned in the books that I've been using to learn these stitches. Um, have a look at that and just play around and see what works best for you. As always with this project, it's all about finding a way that works for you. If you don't like how I'm doing one of these stitches and you've got your own method or you prefer somebody else's method or you want to go with it, any of those is fine. Just do what works for you. Um, I'm liking the stem stitch for these stems. I think it's a bit thicker than back stitch and I want, I want them to stand out but have a play around. You could do them, you could do different stitches um, I'm going to do all of these in stem stitch, but maybe you could do stem stitch for the daisies and do some back stitching for the roses, just so it looks like we've got different stems. Maybe that'll make it look a bit more authentic. I don't know. Who knows? It's entirely up to you. Let's just put a last stitch in here. 
what I'm going to do to finish off is I'm going to come up through the middle there and then I'm just going to pop that through the end so that it's all meeting nicely at the end there. Hey, well I care. I'm glad I went with that green. I think it works really, really nicely. So here we go. I've put the other stems in. It's made a real feature of those. And now what we're going to do is just for another little 3D effect, I've chosen this lovely contrasting paler pink. We're just going to um, basically tie the bouquet together. So I've come up through the fabric there and I'm going to leave that just loose at the back. And I'm just going to do some little stitches over the top at the point where all of those stems are meeting. I'm just going to cover them up as if they've been tied together with a beautiful ribbon. So we're not going to need loads of stitches here. Just check at the back that you're not catching in that, um, that other section there. Just make sure, oops, you don't want to get yourself tied in knots. <laughs> Now, I'm actually going to tie um, a little bow on this, but it looks really nice without it. So if you don't want to faff on with tying a bow, drawing that a little bit short, let's just put another stitch over there. If you don't want to faff on with tying a bow, that's absolutely fine. You could just leave it like that. Oops, done the thing I said not to do. <laughs> let's, just, let's just get that out. Pop that stitch in there. Right, okay, so I'm going to just bring my needle up to the front and then take it off and then what I want to do is attach it to the other side. I mean, if I'd thought about this carefully, I would have done it in a in a way that meant that the end was on the front in the first place, but there we go. I just decided that I was going to do this as I went along, so that's okay. It's okay to make things up as you go along. All right, let me just... Six strands can be a bit fiddly to thread your needle with, don't worry about it, just keep going. Obviously doing it on camera is a bit trickier because I'm trying not to bop the tripod out of the way and have a wobbly frame. Oh, it's going well this, isn't it? <laughs> right, a few attempts later, here we go, just cut that out because nobody wants to sit and watch me attempting to thread a needle really badly. Um, let's just trim that other side because I've left quite a lot of excess on there. Now I'm going to tie a bow here. It's going to be quite fiddly. I've got big hands and it's a small bow. Let's do a knot first and make it feel like more of a, a tie. So I think what I need to do is make the loops a bit bigger first and then we'll sort them out afterwards because that looks huge. So let's just pull those really gently. Um, just try and try and make a lovely bow. Bows are hard to tie, aren't they? They are, they're really hard to tie and make it look neat, but that's okay. We've got time to just that's it, play around. Put me a bit smaller, there we go. Fab, right. We're getting there. Just keep wiggling, keep putting it in position. I'm sure you're way better at tying bows than me. <laughs> there we go, that's cool. Every time I move the bottom, though, that loop comes out of the way, doesn't it? Mm. I just think it's nice to have an extra sort of 3D effect with this hoop. Um, I think what I might do, if that little loop there doesn't want to stay, I might just put a little tie stitch in, a bit like we did with the link stitch, um, just to kind of keep that in position, um, because otherwise it's going to be a bit wobbly-wobbly, and I don't want that, but there we go. 